everyone hope you're doing well so I just wanted to put a try and make it a quick video but a video together showing you if you've got issues with your sphere satellite TV then uh, this is a video just to show you I pulled it apart and actually managed to work out what was wrong with it and put it back together so um, I didn't pull the camera out while I was pulling it apart so I apologize for that but I did pull the camera out while I was putting it back together so uh, yeah basically what happened with mine was that um, the satellite would come up as per normal but then when it tried to turn it was just stall out and wouldn't turn so I thought it could be a couple of things so I looked on the forums and they said there's a plastic gear in there and uh, yeah so I pulled it apart just to see what was wrong with it and uh, this is to show you how to fix it so anyway let's get straight into it so first of all you need to remove this cover off the connections on the roof there will be three cables to disconnect so two coax cables and then one multi-core cable once you've unplugged those you'll be right to go ahead and take these nuts off so there should be four 10 mil nuts that you just got to remove and i had the disc open to uh, make it a bit easier to access these and also a bit easier to sort of lift but just be wary it is pretty awkward and it is pretty heavy to lift off so make sure you've got a secure ladder and uh, some secure footing and maybe even just um, put some some bracing like some timber or something on your roof so that uh, yeah, you don't dent your roof or damage your roof in any way. Once you've got the satellite on the ground, I would remove these four Phillips head screws and this will allow you to remove the dish off the bracket and then take out these two Allen key bolts. Now, once you've taken out these bolts, basically the uh, bracket that holds the dish will come off and also the part that points into the sky will come off. And then go ahead and remove these three Phillips heads, which will allow you to take the plastic cover off. Once you've got that plastic cover off, you will be able to get into the internals of the unit. Okay, so now that you actually have the plastic cover off your sat dish, this is what the internals look like. So the first thing I would do would be to remove the plugs off this circuit board. Just carefully remove them and also probably a good idea just to mark them where they go. Uh, I think they're different, but it just makes it a little easier to put back together. The other thing you can do is remove this limit switch here and also remove this arm. Once you've done that, uh, I did snip this cable tie here because you are going to have to remove this motor with this worm drive and this cable tie stops the motor from lifting when it turns. So just be sure to make sure that if you do snip the cable ties around these motors like I have on this one here, just to reinstall them, just so they don't lift when they go to operate. So the next thing to do is to find the plugs which are for these cables here and gently feed them back down the shaft here. So you want to remove the cable so they're not protruding up through the shaft here because we're going to have to apply some heat to this nut. So they look like they won't fit, but if you turn them 90 degrees, I think this is one of them here. If you actually turn this 90 degrees and gently feed it down through the shaft, it will fit, trust me. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it, but it does. And uh, just be careful when you're doing that so you don't damage it. The next thing to do once you've removed these cables out of this shaft is to actually push out these split pins. So you can see we have a split pin here and then there's another one on this side. And then what I did once I did that was I actually applied some heat to this Loctite here. I did try and undo it without applying heat and it was pretty tight so I didn't want to force it and I didn't have the right tool for this nut. So I was using a Perry Multi Grips. But once I applied some heat, it loosened up quite nicely and I was able to remove it. So I just used my little Kabak heat gun, little blowtorch, and it worked a treat. Just being careful not to get too much heat onto these motors. So once you've done that, you can now remove these four Phillips head screws and lift these covers off. And then you'll be able to lift this worm drive plus also this golden gear and also the motor for the rotation you'll be able to lift them all at the same time and this should just slide straight off the shaft and then once you've done that we'll move on to the next step just one thing i wanted to show you here was that if you do pop the cover off the end of the motor here on the worm drive you can see that there is a plastic gear and some people have said they've had issues with that before so as you can see it is plastic there and uh, mine was in good condition there was no issue with that so I knew straight away that that wasn't the problem and uh, there's a little spring in there so just be careful not to lose that and that is one thing you can look at just to see if it is damaged so in this clip you can see that I'm actually rotating the worm drive by using a flat blade screwdriver I've just pulled that plastic gear out 
Now, when I first pulled this out, I could not rotate this with my screwdriver. So the issue was it was all seized up, but this is after I'd put it back together and greased everything up and it was all working like new. So yeah, that's, that's what you can do as a bit of a test to see if yours is working once you get to this point, but mine would not rotate originally. Now that you've popped the worm drive out, you can separate the two pieces and this is the base plate. And yeah, you can see the rust there. I had a little bit of wet and dry on it um, just to show the rust there, but started to tidy it up. And then this is going to be the top plate and you can see the bearing there's pretty much got no grease on it whatsoever. So it was quite rusty and yeah, I popped that seal out. Then I was able to just pull that bearing out and I tidied that up and wet and dried everything and got all the corrosion off. And then I greased everything up so it should last a lot longer now and uh, that was the issue it was all just seized up and wasn't able to rotate so just a couple of pictures showing you the rust and the corrosion that had occurred on each plate and the bearing okay so here is the cleaned up version i've had some wet and dry sandpaper on it and cleaned the bearing cleaned the shim and also cleaned uh, the housing that it sits in and it looks so much better now and uh, obviously over the time being parked near the ocean you do get corrosion but still that should have had some grease on it and I can tell there was no grease on there from factory um, obviously no wonder it sort of has seized and here's the base plate and you can see I've cleaned it up as well there's still a little bit of rust there but I got most of it off and it looks a lot better than it did when I pulled it apart so with a bit of grease she should be all good to go now the grease is applied, I've applied it to the actual base plate and the top plate and greased up the bearing that sits in the top plate here and also installed the seal. Now when you put it back together, I didn't talk about this earlier, there is a tapered bearing that sits in the top and I actually packed that with grease like a wheel bearing because it had next to no grease in it as well. And you can see that it looks like it's going to last a lot longer without seizing up again. Okay, so I've sort of jumped right to it reassembled again. And as you can see, I've put the gear back down, run the cables through. Uh, I did put the split pins in. You can see they're in. And um, yeah, there's the cables just running onto the circuit board, making sure they're all plugged in in the correct locations. I've reinstalled the limit switch and the little arm that contacts the limit switch. Just test that. Looks all good. And I will put a dab of Sikaflex on the lock nut to make sure it doesn't come loose. There was Loctite on there before, obviously, but I won't put any Loctite on this time, so you can easily get it undone. As you can see, there's a bit of grease there, just so, it, so it's a bit easier for the next bloke to undo it. So here's the plugs all in their correct location. And one thing I haven't done yet is I haven't put the cable ties on the motors just to hold them down. You can see they'll lift as they try to turn. So uh, yeah, really important to make sure you cable tie those motors back down. Okay, so now it's time to put all the external pieces back together. So just mount the bracket on which holds the dish and also the converter which points at the sky and also the plastic cover. So just take your time putting these back together to make sure you put them back in the right way and in the right positions. Uh, yeah, you don't want to get this the wrong way because it could damage something when it goes to fold down. But once you get them in correctly, it's time to mount it back on the roof and plug up your connections and test that it works. And hopefully everything you've done has fixed your satellite and it's good to go. As you can see here, my satellite is now working correctly and it's rotating. So before it was obviously seized up and uh, yeah, it just wouldn't turn at all, but now that I've uh, freed up and lubricated the bearings properly, it can now turn freely and work as it should. So I hope this video has been really helpful, and if you do have issues with your satellite, this will point you in the right direction and you're able to fix it yourself. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.